Do you know what is the topic of the decade as far as your IT career is concerned? It is a data science. So in this video, I'm going to talk about data science as a career and what all necessary skills required to master your journey as a data scientist. So let's deep dive into data science as a career path and its skills. So as far as your data science career is concerned, you need to know some basic things. Then maths plays very important role. Uh, apart from that feature engineering, there are uh, various ML algorithms. So you need to know that. Then apart from that, there are some data mining algorithm, AI, ML implementation, so various programming language, various libraries are there. So which programming language use which kind of library that we will see. Then generative AI, it is a topic of the current current scenario as far as machine learning and data science is concerned. Then deep learning use cases we will talk about. Then Google AI ML and how, how we can determine exact which uh, module of the Google AI ML we need to choose. Then something I'll talk about AI ML ops also and product based ML tools, chatbot, the latest greatest thing as far as um, uh, data science and uh, auto responses are concerned. Then online community platform and their subscription. And apart from that, we will, uh, I mean, I'll talk more about cloud ML as a separate topic in a cloud computing. So let's talk about data science as a base. So as a data science base is concerned, you need to know at least one programming language. So right now, if you go in the market and if you see the uh, lots of noise around Python, and that's where you need to learn Python. And these are some of the editors related with Python. So out of that, PyCharm is uh, quite, quite popular. Then it, uh, it is R programming language and you can use R Studio for R programming language. Apart from that, if you are from big data world, that's where Scala is grabbing lots of attention, but there is a Go language and Java. Also, we have lots of use cases as part of the AI ML journey. And that's, you can develop, <coughs> there are various editors when it comes to the Java, but out of that Eclipse is very famous. Then C Sharp, if you are from Microsoft tools and technology stack, and that's where Visual Studio Editor plays very important role. And we have another popular programming language that is MATLAB uh, programming language as far as your uh, data science engineering career is concerned. Then let's see what all the popular libraries and their contributors uh, are there. So let's see what all those popular libraries as far as three most popular languages are concerned as part of your data science journey. So let's talk about Python first. So when it comes to the Python, we have a TensorFlow, scikit-learn, Py, uh, PyTorch and Keras. These are the most popular libraries. And when it comes to the Scala, we have a deep learning 4J, Spark ML and Predict io these are the top most popular libraries and when it comes to the r we have a h2 h2o mlr and xgboot these these are the popular libraries so that is about popular libraries and the most popular programming language but when you are starting your career as a data scientist no doubt you need to know something about RDBMS and SQL programming language. So without that, uh, it's it's very difficult to survive as a data scientist in your career. So that's where you need to know at least one programming, one database. And as far as SQL is concerned, you need to know uh, basics of the SQL, how the table is created, how how to give access to the table and how to play with that data and that's where joins comes into the picture there are various types of joins so go and deep dive into those joins trigger function views indexes query optimization technology common table expression so these are some of the things associated with sql and you need to know in order to master your uh, data science journey apart from that there is a uh, data modeling so once you get high level requirements uh, as far as your data understanding is concerned you need to document and model them so that's where data modeling your diagram proper domain and its requirement understanding that that plays very important role when it comes to the high level designing of RDBMS tables. Apart from that, we have a cloud databases, but again, in cloud databases, we use the same SQL query language as, as far as playing with the data. So that is all about RDBMS as a data science journey. Then 
before giving data to data science algorithm or ml algorithm we need to massage that data and that's where etl tools and technology plays very important role so there are various etl tools like informatica ssis data stage oracle data integrator talent deep pentaho and there are many more so you need to know that apart from that cloud etl tools are there so i'll i'll cover it as a separate topic as part of the cloud technology and you need to know some basic concept related with data warehouse and its designing and uh, there is another important component as part of the data science journey that is visual representation of your data and that's where you need to know at least one reporting tool that uh, and these are some of the uh, popular reporting tools like power bi tableau click view grafana excel excel is very important as part of your data science journey and there are various types of charts and graphs so you need to know uh, most of the charts and graph in order to make your data in a more readable and graphical format so that is about reporting uh, reporting tools but apart from that you need to know graph reading and data storytelling skills also uh, you need to be subject matter expert of specific domain and as a data analyst you need to know feature engineering data wrangling and exploratory data analysis the skills are also very important so that is all about to give some base as a part of data science journey so as part of data science journey you need to know mathematics and statistics and that's where probability differential calculus algebra in algebra again bias and variance coefficient confusion matrix normal distribution correlation variance uh, point estimate and uh, confidence intervals regression analysis in regression analysis again we have a linear regression polynomial regression uh, Bayesian regression, Ridge regression, Lasso regression, logistic regression, linear programming. So this, this mathematical skills and statistics skills at the basic level, at least you need to know. Apart from that, uh, when you go for a data science journey, the most important part will be your feature engineering. And in feature engineering, again, you, you need to select a uh, right feature in order to give data to your ML model. And there will be some functional flow and as part of your data science journey, you need to know feature engineering because in order to develop data model, you need to extract right features. And that's where all these techniques comes into the picture. So out of that, there is a subset selection, information theory, then independent criteria, lasso based FI, uh, select FS selection theory, feature selection theory, then structure learning, correlation FS, feature selection, regularized trees, uh, meta heuristic methods are there. And then uh, some embedded in machine learning algorithm. So these are some of the techniques which are you need to master to identify right features as part of your feature engineering. So that is about feature engineering. Now coming to the most crucial part of uh, data science journey that is machine learning algorithm. So when it comes to the machine learning algorithm, we have a supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, reinforcement learning, neural network for deep learnings, and some ensem uh, ensemble learnings are there. So let's see what is there as part of the supervised learning. So in supervised learning, uh, uh you, you need some human intervention right so that is where supervised learning comes into the picture and we have a uh, classification algorithm regression algorithm and again anomaly detection algorithm collaborative filtering so in classification algorithm again there are two types like binary classification and multi classification so in binary classification we have logistic regression decision trees random forest linear support vector machine svm these are the algorithm and when it comes to the multi class classification we have logistic regression again ordinary least square decision tree random forest new bias classification k mean algorithm so in k mean we have k n n uh, KNN that is K, uh, nearest neighbor uh, algorithm and when it comes to the regression uh, algorithms we have linear regression logistic regression ridge regression lasso regression 
polynomial regression, decision tree, random forest, Bayesian regression, ordinary least square regression, neural network regression. So these are the regression algorithm. So again, uh, uh, there is anomaly detection and collaborative filtering. These techniques are also used as part of uh, as part of supervised learning. In supervised learning, we have to evaluate the performance of model in the regression analysis. And for that evaluation, we have various techniques like uh, mean absolute error, mean square error, root mean square error, mean absolute percentage error, root mean square algorithmic error, coefficient of determine R. So R square with adjust to feature quantity. So these are some of the technique which we use for evaluation of the model. So once you build up the model using supervised learning as part of the regress, uh, regression analysis, these are the techniques used for, for evaluating your model. And there are many use cases, but one example I have given as part of the supervised learning, we, we use supervised learning algorithms for fraud detection. So that is all about supervised learning. Let's see what is there in unsupervised learning. So let's see what are the techniques used for identifying unsupervised learning. So we have clustering, dimension reduction, independent component analysis, association rule run learning, collaborative filtering, pattern search. In clustering, again, we have k-mean algorithm. In k-mean, we have uh, centroid-based algorithm, connectivity-based algorithms, density-based algorithms, and probabilistic. Then mean shift is another clustering technique is used uh, as part of unsupervised learning. Then fuzzy C-mean, DB scan, agglomerative uh, clustering techniques is used as part of the unsupervised learning. In dimension reduction, let's see what all the algorithms and techniques are available. So we have TSNE, that is T distributed stochastic, uh, stochastic neighbor embedding, then PCA principal component analysis, singular value decomposition, LSA, and Latin semantic analysis, linear discriminate analysis, and uh, LLE, that is loyal linear embedding. So out of that, LSA use, you, is used for uh, natural language processing and uh, uh, LDA is used for dimension reduction technique. So that is about dimension reduction. But apart from that, we have independent component analysis, association rules, learning, collaborative filtering, and some search pattern we use. So out of that, we have a priori, then EC LAT and FP growth, that is frequent pattern growth uh, algorithm to identify the pattern search. So in case of unsupervised learning, there are plenty of use cases, but a couple of them I have listed here. One is social network application. We use lots of unsupervised learning. And then language prediction, it is one of the popular use case where supervised learning is being used. So that is all about unsupervised learning. Now let's see what is there as part of reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, we have a model-free reinforcement learning and model-based reinforcement learning. So let's see what is there as part of model-free RL. So policy optimization is the technique used. And in policy optimization, again, we have a policy gradient, DDPG, A2C, A2A3C, DT3, and PRO. SAC and TRPO. These are the policy optimization technique being used. And yeah, another part is there as part of model free reinforcement learning that is Q-learning. That's where DON, Depot Network, DTPG, TD3, SAC, CP, uh, C51 and QR, DQN and HER. These are the learning techniques used as part of reinforcement learning. In model-based RL, we have again learned the model that is world model, I2A, MB, MF and MBV techniques and alpha zero is part of the given the model. So again, just you need to explore all these keywords as part of your reinforcement learning. So that is about reinforcement learning. Coming to the neural network, that is means 
in machine learning algorithm neural networks are very important and when it comes to the neural network we have various types of neural networks that we can see here so we have uh, uh, perceptron free forward so again it's a neural network the the way we have a brain right brain will have lots of neuron and through that they will communicate with each other right so similar pattern as part of this algorithm they try to implement and these are some of the uh, charts and components related with uh, neural network apart from that let's see what is there as part of uh, neural network we have cnn means convolution neural network gan generative uh, adverse uh, real uh, neural network or network rnn mlp multilayer perception radial basis function network and auto encoder and transformer these are some of the neural network and deep learning algorithms available as part of data science apart from that we have ansible learning so so what is ansible learning where uh, multiple models are uh, bring together so if you see here combine multiple weak models and learners into a predictive model to reduce bias variance and improve accuracy so when you develop your model there are chances that it will be a bias with certain output right a certain uh, we need we need to provide uh, proper intelligence and that's where we combine different different technique and we try to uh, make it more accurate output so that's where backing bagging that is part of the random forest boosting which is ada boost cat boost xg boost light gbm and gradient boost and stacking these are the technique used so that was all about machine learning let's see what is there as part of data mining algorithms so in data mining algorithms means you need to um, play with that data right you need to mine that data so that's where we have crunchers guides advisor predictors uh, tacticians strategist lifter partners okays and supervisors these are the data mining algorithm and techniques used now moving on to the ai ml implementation so as part of ai ml implementation there are uh, various techniques so first you need to identify the data and as part of the identification of the data you may need to use some test data or training data then you will build the model and uh, you will keep on feeding the data you will train that model you will see the test phase practices uh, to check the right output of that model now coming to the next part which is very important so as part of the python development scala development java and r programming already we have seen the popular libraries in this programming language but let's see a few more libraries uh, as part of uh, python implementation so we have uh, so if you are using python then you need to know numpy pandas matplotlib uh, then uh, scipy cborn these are the libraries and you can see these are the libraries which are used for visualization out of that matplotlib and cborn then scikit-learn is very very popular library as far as machine learnings are concerned then stat model for statistic and for web crawling you have to use scrappy url lib then beautiful soap uh, request html so these are the libraries but apart from that we have a request xl xml so so these are the libraries for web scrolling kind of uh, output if you want to now coming to the next part uh, something which is related with text data or natural language processing so if you want to do uh, natural language processing we have very popular library which is nltk natural language toolkit then spa spa sci that is uh, the library which is used for uh, nlp using cython for speed so another cython is another uh, compiler in case of python apart from that we have a fuzzy fuzzy uh library then spicy regex again it is very important as part of uh, text data analysis text blob and core nlp so these are the library used for uh, text analysis and nlp suppose you want to do some image processing so that's where open cv pilo scikit image simple cv maho mahotas these these are the libraries available in case of uh, python so uh, while doing these things you extract the metadata and the text from over the thousands of different file types for example ppt 
uh, XLX means Excel files and PDF. And you do that data analysis. So as part of the deep learning, we have Theano, Blocks, TensorFlow, Keras, MaxNet, PyTorch, XGBoost, and uh, Light. GBM. These are the libraries popular. And when it comes to the big data, we have a PySpark, right? And in PySpark, we have MLLib and that is from Databricks. So these are the libraries. Now moving to the next part, which is Scala. So you need to know the Scala is basic. Again, as far as uh, big data is concerned, so you need to know PySpark. So in PySpark, you need to understand the basics of the PySpark, MLLib, MLflow, graphics. Uh, these are some of the uh, libraries you need to know when it comes to the uh, understanding data science using Scala and Spark. Now moving on to the Java. In Java, we have uh, Mahout as a big data library. But apart from that, we have a Tika for playing with uh, different different types of file format and extracting data from those files. And Tika is developed by IBM. Okay, so Tika is very uh, popular and open source library available while playing with various file format. When it comes to the R programming, we saw already, right? We have H2O library, which is very popular. But apart from that, we have ggplot2, that is for visualization. Now moving on to the most crucial part, that is ML algorithm selection. So when it comes to the ML algorithm selection, we have very good uh, flow chart. So suppose your use case is related with dimension reduction, right? So that time you will go for unsupervised learning using dimension reduction. And again, you can select that specific algorithm based on this inputs. And suppose if it is not dimension reduction, then you will check whether it has some responses in terms of data, then you will go for unsupervised learning using clustering technology. And you will select that particular algorithm from this data points. And suppose again, you got some response, responses, means you have some input there and you will check the predicting numerics, right? What kind of numeric predictions you want to do. And based on that, you will go for unsupervised learning algorithm using regression technologies. And if it is not associated with unsupervised learning, uh, then you will go for supervised learning using classification technology. And based on those inputs, again, you will select that specific algorithm as part of your data science model generation. Now coming to the next topic, which is very hot topic right now, that is generative AI. So lots of noises around generative AI. So when it comes to the generative AI, it is all about text to image, image to video, video to audio. So all these three forms of the data, image, text, audio comes into the picture. So text to image conversion, if you want to do, then we have these popular providers in the market. Suppose text to video you want to do, then we have uh, these are the providers right now in the market. Then text to audio. So again, we have these these are the entities available in the market right now as part of the text to audio generation. If you go text to text, suppose you feed some data and you want to generate some output as part of natural language processing, then these are the provider right now in the market. Apart from that, if text to motion, text to code, suppose you want to generate the code from text input, above for your query so these are the tools available then text to uh, nft then lens ai is the technology uh, which is very popular then text to 3d kind of animation you want to do then that's where dream fusion and this get 3d and clip mesh comes into the picture then audio to text we have whisper and uh, assembly ai uh, providers are there. Then audio to audio, we have audio ML and voice OD. These are the providers. Then brain brain to text. I don't know what this exactly from speech, speech from brain, some advanced uh, generative AI things I can see here. Then image to text, uh, we have these providers. So out of that GPT-3 X image caption that is from open AI, which is, which is very popular. So again, I got this particular presentation from uh, LinkedIn and I thought I should make it as part of this presentation. So that is generative AI. Now moving on to the next part, 
which is deep learning use cases so again there are lots of deep learning use cases so mainly something which is related with neural network so you can see here as part of rna r n n uh, these are the techniques available cnn we have these techniques auto encoder and gan we have these respective use cases there and there are many more actually okay i'll not go and elaborate each and every use case because uh, every topic is again uh, separate learning so that is about deep learning now coming to the google ml ai ml so suppose you are working on the google ml and if you want to select specific path i mean what kind of algorithm and what kind of output you require then this is the algorithm you can use so does your use case fit pre packaged ai solution if yes then these are the solution available from google ai ml if no then do you have your own training data if answer is yes then you will move for the next thing or otherwise if there is no then you go for pre train apis and these are the options available as per part of the google ai ml and suppose you don't have uh, if suppose you have your pre trained data then data in big query and users are more comfortable with sql if users are more comfortable with sql then you can go for the big query ml and if no then again you have to check writing model in training code yourself then you can go for these options and if no then there are these options so that is something which is related with uh, google ai ml now another thing which is very popular right now in the market which is uh, ml ops okay so ml ops means whatever model you generate as part of the data we need to keep on maintaining their versions right so first what we have uh, you have some data source some data pipeline and from there you identify the feature you store and you transform that data and you make it uh, in a usable format then you uh, create your model right you uh, you give training to your model then there will be continuous evaluation of that model and from there you will deploy one specific model as part of your production use case then that model will do some real time prediction as part of api expose and uh, model monitoring will happen uh, in your case and then uh, you will get to see actual result as part of that model so this entire thing is maintained for Mm, means ml ops is for maintaining various versions of the model and deploying right version in order to do the prediction dashboard so that is all about uh, ml ops now moving to the next topic which is which is product based ml tools so again there are various products as far as ml uh, analysis is concerned so out of that i have worked extensively in cloudera uh, toolkit so that's where we have cdsw that is cloudera data science workbench and recently they come up with a modified version that is cml cloudera machine learning but again we have a saas and saas as statistical compute ml then we have alterix then databricks uh, sage maker data iq data robot veka h2o ai so that is from uh, our background open ai is there right chat gpt which is very popular tool from open ai then uh, prediction io that is again from open source uh, community that is apache rapid miner orange data rpm these are some of the product based ml tools uh, if you want to explore your data using readily available tools then coming to the chatbot again uh, various chatbots are there but out of that these are the popular tools and technologies available as far as chatbot is concerned but we have a watson which is very popular ibm chatbot then google is planning to come up with its own chatbot that is bard already it is there i think and then we have a chat gpt where we can fire a query and lots of things are being said about chat gpt right now so that is all about chatbot now coming to the uh, community so suppose you want to build up your career as a data scientist you need to subscribe to right communities so uh, there are many communities as far as data science is concerned but i am explicitly talking about kaggle here so which is very popular community you can learn lots of things in this community there are competition and lots of free data sources are also available if you want to 
play with various uh, machine learning algorithm and the last topic is about cloud ml so I'll, i'm going to cover it as a separate topic as part of cloud ml when i'll talk about cloud computing technologies so these are the things associated with your career as a data science so what i feel you need to select that one programming language one database and out of this uh, three types of data set i mean uh, text image audio video i mean four data set uh, first go with the text data set and then you can drill down to the specific stream of the data science like natural language processing or suppose you want to go specifically with image processing career uh, as a data science or audio or video so select that stream and explore those specific libraries as part of your data science so please comment which programming language you want to use as part of your data science journey which database you want to explore and the third uh, out of the text image audio video uh, data processing so which type of data is your targeted data uh, you want to learn as part of your data scientist journey so all the best get to know about all these uh, keywords and have that deep understanding uh, once you explore it in a more detail so that's all about being part of your journey as a data science thank you for listening